Well, leading up to, to Prince's uh, passing, the two of you actually were starting to reconnect. Yes, for work. Yeah. Um, and Prince was becoming more religious over the years. I remember when I talked to Morris Day, it was like, as he was getting more into the whole Jehovah's Witness mm -hmm. thing in his later years, it was like, you know, Morris even said how Prince at one point even said they couldn't be friends unless he converted and became that same religion and, and, right. and so forth. Were you seeing some of that? No. I nope. never saw that. Um, I mean, he kept, for example, and why he would call me on his birthday, I don't know. He would always call me on his birthday. What are you doing? And then I would say, oh, happy birthday. I always wish him a happy I don't celebrate birthdays. My religion doesn't allow me to celebrate birthdays. <laughs> I go, well, I, I do. And I'm celebrating your birthday today. It was that kind of a thing. But um, he was very spiritual. He read a lot of fascinating books. Ike, Ike, I-C-K-E. He believed in the paranormal. He believed believed in. Uh, uh, I do believe that he believed in outside life, outside of our planet. You know, alien life, hmm. uh, something out of the ordinary, as uh, something extraordinary that's out in the sky. So we talked about those things. There was something else beyond death. Yeah. We talked about those things. We were we were having grown up conversations. <laughs> yeah, there was an interview I read um, where. You talked about talking, you know, you and Prince had a conversation. You said, we discussed the issues that we that we had, mm -hmm. all the things that we didn't discuss before. I just looked like, man, we're growing, we're growing up. We're old folks now. Yeah. And he looked at you and said, ain't no, ain't no old folks here. Right. That's right. I was sitting <laughs> uh, at his office and he was showing me, you know, his performances. And I just looked and I, you know, he showed me the meme, you know, this could be us. He goes, I wrote a song for us. And I said, look at us. And I just looked at him and I looked at our you know, our mean, the photo of us on the motorcycle. I said, we're all grown up. We're old now. I said, we're old folks. I ain't old. <laughs> I ain't old. <laughs> I just started laughing. <laughs> so I was like, you're right. You're not. Well, you had said that he was trying to right his wrongs. Yes. Before he died. Yes. Can you explain that? The contracts, the fact that he didn't pay some of his close family. When I mean his close family, that's me, little Susan, Morris, Jerome. So he was righting his wrongs before he passed away. Uh, before he passed away, he reached out uh, to me and to Susan and Brenda, and he asked me for their bank account numbers. So then I had to get a hold of the girls, and he wanted to put money uh, in their accounts, in my account, uh, just to hold us over until he actually paid me for Glam Life and for Manic Monday and for the Apollonia 6 album from all the money that he recouped back from Warner Brothers when he, you know, gave him back his masters. So he wanted to, you know, make movies and just a whole bunch of stuff that he wanted to do. So, right, because he wanted a new Apollonia 6 project. Mm hmm. And I guess you're like, okay, I got to go back to the gym and right. <laughs> start working out. New movies. And so, yeah, I'm going back to the gym. I'm studying, you know, like vocals. And, you know, he gave me hope. And for me, hope is everything. Yeah. You know, you could live on hope for the rest of your life. Right. And I guess he was writing a book and he wanted you to write a book. Yes. Afterwards, right? Yes. So that to me was shocking uh, when he said, I stopped telling your priceless stories. And then he sent me emails to remind me. Stop telling your priceless stories. And I said, I don't understand. He says, you're going to write your your book. You have to tell your life story. I'm going to do mine. And that to me was shocking mm -hmm. that he was going to do his. Um, he says, yours will be released within the year after mine. I said, okay. Because I know that you write your diaries because I used to write my diaries and write poetry and haikus, which he would read. You know, he'd sneak into my <laughs> room. He did. When I was on set and if I was doing scenes with the girls, he would go back to my hotel. They'd give him the keys. He'd check through all my stuff. Oh, Prince is sneaky. Yo. Yeah, I, never, he, I never knew this out of him. Yeah, okay. he did. <laughs> Tapping your phone, private Everything. investigators, reading your diary. Everything. He wanted Man. to make sure, you know, that okay. I was not being naughty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I guess he had a party for you also? Yes. So I go to Minnesota. This is June 28th, 2014. And we celebrated our 30th anniversary of the release of Purple Rain. So we had a party at Paisley Park. It was just Prince, his engineer, 
and Third Eye Girl and myself. So I was looking around for party people and there was just for us. So he performed all of our music, and which was shocking and it was great. At one point he goes and he taps on the mic. He starts doing Take Me With You. He looks at me and he's like taps. And I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> You're going to sing for me? You're going to serenade me? And I just, you know, planted my ass on the chair. And I was like, I'm not moving. And then he took a break. And then he gave me this whole, like a dossier on his, going back to the, his roots of rock and roll. Mm. And then he started playing some new rock and roll music. It was incredible. And he filmed it. He asked my permission. He goes, do you mind if I film this? I said, no. He goes, I'm going to film it in infrared. And he posted it. And I went back to my room. He posted it. He thanked me to the fans. He goes, thank you. He goes, you should come here more often. We sounded, we never sounded this great. I was like, oh my gosh. The girls were all decked out like they were going to go on stage. Mm. They were beautiful. They were so talented. Incredible, those girls. I was like, Wow. So he put, on the stage, he put a little stool, sat me right next to his microphone. And you can still see the pictures. It's still there. Nice. 